and welcome. It is Nathan, your friendly neighborhood support engineer, and I'm back to you with another GS tutorial. But this one's going to be slightly different because we're going to be actually talking about support and how to go about getting support. So I know there could be a lot of confusion for anyone who's new to Grandstream, uh, especially when they run into an issue, they don't know where to go. So this video is going to explain all that and more. Now I know what some of you may be saying, oh man, I'm really good with technology, I've worked in IT for 30 plus years, whatever you want to say, at the end of the day, you're going to need support and you're going to need it in a way that's not going to be confusing or daunting in order to use it. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to reverse roles here, I'm actually going to be the end user. And I will be filing a ticket that I have on a UCM just to give you a good point of reference. I'm going to log in uh, as an end user. I'm going to show you the different options we have on the help desk, which will help you greatly in responding to issues that you may occur when doing an install. One of the first things that you're going to want to do is go to partnerconnect.grandstream.com at the top left hand corner and then hit enter and from there you'll be presented with this page. Now you can also get to this page via the Grandstream website. You'll find it in the help desk tab. But beyond that, let's move forward with three key user levels which you will be presented with. Now if you haven't signed up before, you're gonna have three choices. You're gonna have an end user registration, reseller registration, and ITSP registration. Now obviously the end user is the lowest support that there is. Uh, reseller is mid-grade and ITSP is gonna be the highest. What is an end user you might be asking? An end user are individuals who do not support or resell Grandstream equipment, but are looking for support for Grandstream products. Whereas resellers are individuals who resell Grandstream equipment, purchase from authorized distribution channels. They also will be providing support to their own set of customers that they may be managing through third party or a combination of Grandstream to third party equipment. These individuals may be looking for assistance in troubleshooting an issue or guidance on technical issues they may be experiencing. Reseller accounts will need to go through an approval process by Grandstream before their account is confirmed. Next, we have ITSPs, which are oftentimes internet telephony service providers. These entities provide VoIP-based telecommunication services and typically have a medium to large footprint in their geographic locations. These entities may be looking for technical assistance when working with Grandstream products in order to service their customer base. ITSP accounts will also need to go through an approval process by Grandstream before the account is confirmed as well. With that being said, let's go ahead and create an account and see what our help desk has to offer. First, I'm going to go ahead and click on the end user account since I know I'm not going to be a reseller. I'm going to go ahead and add my information into here. All right, now that we have that done, we can go ahead and hit confirm. First, we have to make sure that we do the I'm not a robot check agree to our terms of service and then click register all right now that you're done submitting your information into the help desk you should receive an email regarding the activation of your account once you click that link and re-log in to verify yourself you can then go ahead and log in onto this web portal now there's one thing that I did with the help of video editing. I showed you guys in the first part how to create a user account, but I'm actually logged in as a reseller. So, you know, for time consumption, I want to demonstrate uh, what other options resellers will have. So with that being said, uh, first thing that you might be asked is to locate your reseller or your user ID. And you can simply do this by hovering to the right hand corner here. As you can see, I, I am using a reseller account. My reseller account ID is 29949. Now one of the differences between the reseller account and the user account is you won't have the addition of profiles on a user account. Whereas a reseller, we're actually allowed to have sub accounts within our uh, main account. And this is very helpful, especially if you're a, a VoIP company that has a multitude of employees. So let's go ahead and actually create some of these sub accounts. We can do this by going to account tools. And as you can see, this main account belongs to Bob Ross himself. He is actually an engineer for us. And right here, you'll actually see the email. To add an additional user, we simply click on new user. 
and add all the necessary information on who that new user is going to be. You're going to have a first name, last name, their phone number, their title, their email account, as well as their uh, password. You will have to enter, uh, enter the password once again for the confirmation, but most of that's self-explanatory. However, we do have a permissions field here, which is actually going to be very important for us. Activating or deactivating is pretty easy for this account. It's right there plain as day. We can see that this account is set to yes and it is active. We also have the abilities of granting permission levels. As you can see, we have an admin privilege level there, which gives the account the ability to modify company details. So obviously, if that's your job, you don't want to give that to anyone else, but you can allow someone else to be the admin, which that's currently what we are now. Just below that, we can manage company tickets. So if we have that enabled, this user will be able to manage all the company tickets, change and edit them, or even reply to the comment as that user. Just below that, we have manage users. So just like how I'm actually managing this user that we're creating now, um, you can also give the ability of John Doe to also create and uh, manage other users. And one more notch below that, we have the ability to manage our RMA process, which that's going to be a return on some of our defective units if you actually happen to run into one. But you can also grant that ability to this user. But I'm currently fine with this account just being active as it is. We might want to actually have this user uh, manage other users if we want. So I'm going to go ahead and make that one change there. Click Create New User. And it was that easy. But once you're done doing that, you'll notice uh, we have a users list here. This shows you all the active users on this main account called Bob Ross. We also have the ability of importing other users as well. We can go ahead and add their email here. And if they're already an existing user, we can grab that user and add it to our list, making it easy so that you don't end up having to recreate an entirely new account. All right, now that we're done creating and adding users, it's time for us to learn how to submit a ticket. So we can do that by hitting the support tab, then navigating to the troubleshoot tickets area, which is right here. As you can see, we have submit a ticket, my tickets, and company tickets. Obviously, company tickets are, are only going to be seen if you are a company administrator or manager. Then just above that, we have my tickets, which are tickets that are pertaining to your account that you're currently logged in as. And just above that, we're going to click on Submit a Ticket. Now, in order to have really good results when it comes to working with our support staff, especially when you're working in the framing of creating a ticket, it's important that you get a lot of the initial information correct because any deviation from what's actually true in our problem case can throw our engineers off. So, uh, first off, we're going to start with explaining what product category is. Product category refers to a type of grand stream device that you're using or are referring to. This can be a networking device, a desk phone, cordless phone, or any other subcategories of our products. If for some reason you don't know what exactly to choose, find the category that is closest to your product. And in my example, I'm going to be using our IPPBX. Next, we have the product model number. And just so you're aware, if you don't know what model your product is, you can often find this as a sticker on the back of the device. So on our phones, we oftentimes have it really close to the Ethernet cable ports, whereas if you're using a server or a gateway, you can find it oftentimes on the bottom of the system. So let's go ahead and click on this. I'm using a 62 series UCM. Now next, and also one of the most important things to get right, is the actual firmware. For all of our devices, you can find firmware information on different areas of the web config or LCD screens. But once you find them, you can go ahead and click on the firmware and select which firmware that you're currently using. Now there might be a rare case in which you have a firmware that has been released that might not be noted on the ticket. If that's ever the case, choose the most recent one and then on your description you can add the actual firmware that you're using. Next we're going to go ahead and click issue type. Now we have three categories in here. We have the hardware, which if you're suspecting that you might be running into a hardware issue, like let's say in our case our UCM is not taking calls and we're not seeing any LED indications for the analog lines, I might assume that it could be a hardware issue and that's where I'll go ahead and hit the hardware. 
However, uh, if you don't think it's a hardware issue and it's something on your programming end, maybe you're not too confident with the system yet, you can go ahead and select software. Our other and third option, the DOA, is if you had a unit that is just completely not powering on straight from the box. So first time you've ever used it, you try to plug everything in and it doesn't work, you can go ahead and use DOA for that. But in our case, I think there's definitely something in software not working. And next, we have Platform. Here at Grandstream, we pride ourselves on being third-party compatible, and this is oftentimes where you can notate that third-party device. Now, just because that device isn't in the platform section, that does not mean we won't try to work with it and try to support it. We try to be as versatile as we can with our products, so if you don't see it here, you could notate it in the description. And I highly recommend you notate the model, the manufacturer, and even the firmware type on that current unit. That way, it gives our engineers a heads up on how to troubleshoot it. For this example, I'm just gonna put not applicable. So as you can see here, I quickly edited the video. I added my title and description. Now the title of the issue is going to be a quick summary of what's going on. The UCM not accepting calls on analog lines. Pretty straightforward, very simple. And on your description, you should have more of a description here than on this one, but for time's sake, I wrote a quick one. I have a UCM that is not accepting calls from AT&T digital to analog modem that was provided by my customer's ISP. Definitely a lot more description in there. Um, however, if you see anything that you think looks a little bit out of the ordinary, like the UCM's LED lights are blinking on and off, or that you're hearing a lot of static on the lines, go ahead and also add that because it's oftentimes the overlooked that might actually resolve the issue in this case. Next, but definitely not least, are the attachments field. Now, I see a lot of times customers don't use the attachments field that often, but it is actually one of the best things on our ticketing system because you can get a lot done by using our attachment system, whether it's sending over config files, attaching syslog or packet captures, which I'm actually going to show you right now. So in the example of our UCM, I'm going to go ahead and log into one of my UCMs here. Now, because I know it's an analog line issue, I'm actually going to signal troubleshooting. I'm going to start an analog uh, record trace here. And this should give us enough, enough information in order for our engineers to make configuration changes. Once I have fully replicated my test, I can go ahead and stop these captures, download these files, and I can actually upload these files directly to our ticketing system. So let's go ahead and move on over. I'm going to browse the attachments and then click my analog and now my attachment then can now be uploaded. However, one thing that you also want to take note of is the ability to run packet captures. Now you're going to be asked a lot to actually take packet captures of our equipment. Now all of our equipment except for our analog gateways or the 16 series has the ability to run packet captures. So whether it's our phones, our DP series phones, UCM, or even our networking equipment has the ability of running packet captures. Same concept, you make sure you select the right interface, uh, you start the capture, and then you will perform your test. After which you can go ahead and stop that file, download it, and repeat. Now, if you're going to do uh, multi more than one attachment, I highly recommend you add your first attachment, then go back and add all secondary attachments. That way you don't you know, run the risk into dropping one or the other. But now that I'm satisfied with these results, I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. All right, now that I walked you through the creation of a ticket, we can now view and edit our current tickets that we have. As you can see, there's our UC with the analog line issue shown as a new ticket. Then just below that we have one that I had already created that's in progress. And as you can see, I'm actually in the My Tickets field. So this is where we're going to go if we're actually working on a current ticket that you submitted on your user account. 
However, we do have the ability to, to look at and check out company tickets as well for our whole region. However, I wanna go ahead and take a look at our test ticket that we had created earlier. That way you can see what it looks like when you're actually having a conversation between you and one of our support engineers. As you can see, you can actually identify what engineer you're talking to by looking at the header information up here. I'm currently talking with Danny, and I'm here as Bob Ross because we are logged in as the Bob Ross account, and we're replying back and forth. Now, if I wanted to add a comment to this, I can go ahead to the comment field right here, add what I need to add, and even upload an attachment. So as you can see here, I can go ahead and hit Browse, and then click on my attachment and then click post and the attachment will be added now for some reason you are having some issue with attaching a certain attachment because it doesn't support the current file format one of the best things that you can do is actually right click on the object that you want to upload and then send to as a zipped compressed folder now if you do that you can then take that file and then upload it to our ticketing system without issue. But now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and check out our company tickets. As you can see, we only have two tickets and they're all underneath the profile of Bob Ross. So we can actually see who created it and on what day. We could even see what was the last update to this ticket as well. With that being said, if you run into any more issues out there when troubleshooting our equipment, you know where to go and how to navigate our ticketing system. Not only will you get expert advice on our equipment, but you're gonna be talking to engineers just like me because I too, even though I do create YouTube videos, I also work as a Grandstream support engineer and I will be taking tickets and I'll be taking your calls in the call queue. So I'll always be here for that wealth of knowledge and that extra backup in those last minute installs. With that being said, my name is Nathan and as always, you have a good one. We hope that you found that video tutorial helpful, and if you did, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for the latest in video tutorials. I'm Nathan Sharp. You have a good one.